Archaeologists have unearthed bone buttons dating back to prehistoric times. The ancient Greeks and Romans used buttons to both fasten and decorate their clothing. Europeans wore buttons strictly for adornment until about the 1200s. That's when fitted garments became the trend, fastened by a long row of buttons down the front. The rich wore buttons made of silver or gold, sometimes set with precious gemstones. Ordinary people wore buttons made of mere bronze or wood. This is another way to make plastic buttons using polyester resin. Only instead of turning it into sheets, they pour the resin into long metal tubes. Here, they're mixing two different colors to create a design in the plastic. The tubes go into an oven where they bake at 100 degrees Celsius for about an hour until the liquid resin hardens. Once the tubes cool off, workers remove the contents. These long resin rods will become what the industry calls rod buttons. The rods go into a machine called the slicer. Its sharp carbide blade chops the long rods into button-sized blanks. Here's what that looks like in slow motion. It's no use showing you this at regular speed. It would be but a blur. This machine cuts up to 700 blanks per minute. Blanks cut from resin rods run through the same machining center as those cut from resin sheets. In the last segment, we showed you the machining steps in slow motion. Here's what they look like at actual speed. Any type of button can be engraved with a company name or logo. They do this using a computer-programmed laser machine. The laser beam burns the lettering into the plastic. Workers visually inspect the finished buttons to make sure that none have defects. Another way to make plastic buttons is by what's called thermoset compression, a technique that combines both heat and pressure to mold the button's shape. As we see here in slow motion, the raw material isn't liquid resin, but rather melamine powder. A pill-making machine, the kind pharmaceutical companies use, compresses the powder into pill-shaped blanks. Here's what that pill-making action looks like at actual speed. To transform these pills into buttons, workers load them onto a press. The press uses high pressure to force each pill into a button mold for a period of 40 seconds to a minute, depending on the size of the button. At the same time, it heats the mold to 163 degrees Celsius. This bakes the melamine into hard plastic. They cool the molded buttons in a basin of cold water. Some specialty buttons go on to be gold-plated, but not before soaking in a chemical bath to clean their surface so that the plating will bond well. As a rule, only materials that conduct electricity can be metal plated. Plastic, of course, is non-conductive. However, this company has managed to devise a way to gold plate plastic buttons. Exactly how is a closely guarded secret it's not willing to divulge. After plating the buttons in copper, a 12-hour process, they plate them in nickel, which takes just a couple of minutes, and finally in 24 karat gold, which takes just a few seconds. A mere 28 grams of gold is enough to plate 82 kilograms of buttons. 
thermoset compression buttons are a lower end product used primarily for uniforms. Sheet buttons and rod buttons are higher quality, the standard choice for fashion clothing.